Hello and welcome to MBC News with me Marcus Pasanje alongside Savita Wirima, my sign language interpreter tonight. Our top stories. Malawi and Mozambique signed several agreements that will enhance cooperation and boost economic activities between the two countries. The National Construction Industry Council stops a Chinese company, King Steel Malada, from continuing to construct a warehouse along the bypass road in Lilongwe. Farms a project commended for providing finances to rural farmers and enabling access to reliable markets. Malawi and Mozambique have signed several agreements that are going to enhance cooperation and boost economic activities of the two countries. The PACs will see the introduction of direct flights between Malawi and Mozambique and the storage and transportation of fuel products from Mozambique to Malawi through rail, which will reduce the landing costs. Austin Gajibea reports from Maputo, Mozambique. At Maputo International Airport, President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera was welcomed by the Mozambican Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hemin Guido Kaitano, Mozambican High Commissioner to Malawi, Alexander Manjate, and officials from both countries. Then the President was taken to the office of the President of the Republic of Mozambique and where he was warmly welcomed by his counterpart, Philippe Nyusi. The two leaders together with members of delegations had formal talks of the two countries. After a crucial discussion, the two heads of state, there was signing ceremony of legal documents. President Nyusi said the agreements will boost economic growth of the two countries and enhance cooperation. Dr. Jaguera said the agreement of energy is crucial as the Malawi-Mozambique interconnector project will give Malawi 51 megawatts of energy and that the issue of frequent blackouts will be a thing of the past in Malawi. The Malawi leader also mentioned other areas of agreement, which is transportation of fuel products through rail, which will reduce the landing costs. At a productive exchange with my brother, President, on a range of issues that are of interest to our two countries, and he has summarized all of the issues that uh, we discussed so well. I'm pleased that following our engagement, we have signed this agreement, and there will be more to be signed. This is about energy and petroleum, but we will sign uh, shortly uh, air transport uh, agreements because uh, these are making us come closer as people in our uh, uh, region. And uh, I'm happy that uh, we will enhance our electricity supply capacity and so we can clear the rubble of blackouts. And I'm also happy soon we'll be reducing land costs of fuel, hence translating into lower fuel prices in Malawi. And I'm happier that soon we will see uh, direct flights into Mozambique and so forth when all of these things are done uh, our trade relations getting improved, our tourism getting improved, our people-to-people -people interactions. The president was taken on a learning visit to Boani district to appreciate industrial activities. He also inspected Midao Cables International, which manufactures electricity cables and supply to several parts of countries. <laughs> Kachpeya, MBC News, Maputo, Mozambique. The authority at Nakala Port in Mozambique have described the harbor as an untapped opportunity for Malawian importers and exporters. The officials said this when a group of Malawian journalists visited the port. Justin Nkweu has more in this report. According to the port's director, Niemo Induna, the port has a capacity to handle 10 million metric tons of goods but it is only handling three to four million. He said this shows that there is untapped opportunity for Malawi to have its own share of the port's utilization 
topping up on the current usage. Induna then called on Malawians to make use of the port for the growth of both economies. This is a clear sign that um, we still have a lot of capacity to be explored to Malawi. Okay, um, we, are, we are showing uh, to you a new port with an equipment, modern equipment, uh, with, with systems in place. Uh, being said, uh, to say that uh, our operations are very uh, quick um, and this is where you can uh, use Port of Nakala as your main. If you look at, uh, uh, at the, the position of Port of Nakala, it's a very strategic one because it's the short, shortest road uh, to, uh, to Malawi. The reason being this reason why you need to consider uh, Port of Nakala as, uh, as, uh, as the main player uh, to bring goods to Malawi. The director added that the port has put up different structures for efficiency in its operations. He outlined that among others, the port has security cameras in and around its premises, clearance is made on the same day, and it has a lot of shipping lines. They are more than welcome. When we inaugurated the port on the 7th October last year, Malawi president was here with us, and uh, he said that uh, this is Malawian port. Port of Nakala is Malawian port and I'm here to reiterate it and you can see from yourself the infrastructure is new, the equipment is, is new and modern, we are implementing automation so <clears throat> and we do not have any limitations, our operations are 24 hours. Nakala port was rehabilitated, expanded and upgraded last year and President Dr. Lazarus Makathe Jaguera was part of the event. In his speech at the event, Dr. Jaguera said the port is important for the growth of the Malawi economy. Justin Mkweu, MBC News, Nakala, Mozambique. The Minister of Gender has launched a strategy on national political empowerment for women. Minister responsible Jean Sendeza says if properly organized, women have the potential to attain different political positions in the country. She made the remarks in Deza at the launch of the strategy. Margaret Mabando has the report. According to the Ministry of Gender, only 56 women won out of the 457 seats available in local government elections in 2014. And by 2019, local government elections, only 63 women won. This prompted the ministry to come up with a policy that can increase representation of women, especially young women and women with disabilities. Speaking during the launch, Minister of Gender, Jean Sendeza, says there is need for different political parties to create an enabling environment for women to actively participate in politics. The strategy that we are launching is not a, a, a political party strategy. It's a, a strategy for the national uh, political party. All the parties are, are supposed to use this strategy. So the inclusivity that is there, that is what we are promoting, that each and every party should make sure that women parliamentarians, councillors, should, should take part in the general elections that are coming. Oxfam Country Director Lingalide Nimihoa emphasized the need to reduce violence in politics, saying it leads to low participation of women. She therefore expressed optimism that different stakeholders will value efforts to enhance women participation in politics. Political parties being very transparent about how they are conducting things and I must commend the six major political parties that we are working with because they've been able to invite us as observers to their conventions. The MCP in their convention they invited us. We have an invitation from the DPP, Afford and UTMPP and UDF have also told us that they are going to invite us so that we are able to see how transparent how the environment is conducive to women's participation. Team leader for social sector at the EU delegation to Malawi, Michele Krimel has since pledged continued support to government to ensure women fully participate in all electoral processes. We are going to support Malawi in its commitment to achieve 50% targets. And uh, yeah, the support is coming through our bilateral cooperation. Uh, the project we, that is supported the, the development of the strategy to, that was actually um, launched today is part of a broader program that is called BOMALATU. They envisage different kind of support, from support to electoral processes, uh, to support to civil society, to, includes, uh, um, to improve the participation of uh, women and marginalized groups. Uh. 
The National Political Empowerment of Women Strategy seeks to increase women representation at parliament and council level up to 35% in 2025 elections and 50% in 2030. Margaret Mabando, MBC News, Deza. Malawi and the United Nations office in the country have launched the second phase of a peace-building project for border districts aimed at resolving conflicts. Speaking during the launch at traditional authority in Pondes area in Kotakota, Minister of Youth and Sports Uchizim Kandawire said the project will play a pivotal role in fostering peace and unity in border districts. Austin Fukula has filed this report, read by Helix Manimba. The Minister of Youth and Sports told the media after the launch that the second phase of the project has come at an opportune time as the country will conduct general elections next year. Nkandawire further said the mission of the project is in line with the Malawi 2063 goals. Bordering districts are very critical whereby there is increased interaction between the our citizens and those citizens of our, our corresponding countries. So it is very, very important that we sensitize our citizens on how they can be prepared uh, in the area of peace promotion and uh, conflict uh, prevention. Malawi Peace and Unity Commission is working with UN Malawi in training youths and women on peace building in the border districts such as Nkodakota, Chitipa, Karonga and Msanje. A representative of the UN agencies at the launch, Chala Getachu, underscored the UN's commitment to ensuring that Malawi continues to be a peaceful nation, hence the role out of the second phase of the project. Malawi is a peaceful country, um, but you also realize that if there is peace, that needs to be sustained, nurtured um, and kept so that development goes on. Um, but for the selection of Kota Kota and the four uh, TAs, there was an assessment that was conducted um, independently, and we have observed that there are actually latent conflicts that can potentially impact on the peace in the community related to land, related to borders, chieftaincy, um, that need to be um, identified, mitigated. The project on peace building and conflict prevention is courtesy of UN Malawi with funding from the Irish Embassy in Malawi. The first phase of the project was in Mlanje and Mangochi and reached out to almost 5,000 beneficiaries. The National Construction Industry Council, NCIC, has stopped a Chinese company, King Steel Malata, from constructing a warehouse along the bypass road in Lilongwe for non-compliance to construction standards. NCIC has since urged players in the construction industry to always comply with necessary procedures as regulated by the body. Maya Soji Kadzula has the details in this report. The laws of Malawi demand that all construction projects be in line with set standards, including that there should be a contractor and a consultant on any project, and that such projects should use sustainable construction materials. This is in order to ensure that infrastructure is of good quality, safe for users, and sustainable, which NCIC says is not the case with King Steel's Malata's project. The council says it also noted defiance to its stop order and compliance orders issued to King Steel's Matters projects, hence the action. Among other issues, the order by NCIC is against one of the company, Yuamin Yang, who is using common bent bricks at his construction site. There are also cases of casual workers getting injured without being offered treatment. The workers also worry about absence of toilets at the site. What I know, the authorities have been coming here to solve some issues with their papers. We have many problems here, no protective gears. When one is injured, he is supposed to be taken to the hospital, but it is not happening here. We do not have enough toilets here. It's just a temporary toilet and it can fall any time. The council has also warned the other non complying parties that NCIC will not relent in ensuring that construction industry players comply with the law to the later. The laws of Malawi demand that uh, all construction work should be carried out by registered contractors and consultants. When the council visited this particular site, we discovered that uh, the client was not using 
any registered contractor nor consultant. So we therefore issued a stop order and subsequently a compliance order, all of which were defied by this particular client. So the council had to bring in law enforcers to, to, to help it, you know, to make sure that uh, the law is complied with. And as the council want to take opportunity of this moment to inform we would be offended that the laws of Malawi will come after them because this country is operated under the rule of law. However, Yamin Yang, who did not want to speak on record, said he will stop the construction, though he disagreed with some of the accusations levelled against his company by NCIC. Maestro Chikadzula, MBC News, Lilongwe. You are watching MBC News with me, Marcus Pasanje, and my sign language interpreter, Savita Wirima. Remember, you can access all MPC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. A reminder of our top stories. Malawi and Mozambique signed several agreements that will enhance cooperation and boost economic activities between the two countries. The National Construction Industry Council stops a Chinese company, King Steel Malada, from continuing to construct a warehouse along the bypass road in Lilongwe. Farms a project commended for providing finances to rural farmers and enabling access to reliable markets. From the onset of life, a story begins. D. Bye. Bye. Where a journey full of enthusiasm, new experiences, and adventures unfolds. Exciting challenges take you to a crossroads where a life-changing decision has to be made. Now that is where Magu comes in. With the Malawi Assemblers of God University, you are offered a wide range of career opportunities, having programs in the Faculty of Education, Faculty of Commerce and Management, and the Faculty of Theology and Ministerial Formation. Magu understands that education does not just end in the classroom. It offers many extracurricular activities that help in spiritual growth and physical and mental growth through activities such as sports and debate clubs. Magu also offers strong internship and alumni programs where students are ensured a continuing gaining experience and a thriving career network. Begin a new and exciting journey with Magu. Applications are now open for the new 2024 August intake. Join us today. Maranatha, sisi kudeleki, titatsekula, Maranatha, Capital Girls Academy, makolo muna angula, tinamfa. Muna di mkufuna sukuru ya pamamba u Capitolo, lanya mata, nieta zanayo tsopano. Maranatha, Capital Boys Academy, marawake, ndi abu na kwambiri, 50 kilometers, ujoka ya kunilongwe, pampone na peni peni, pacha, patani mbode mbode motel. Chakuja ndi hotel standard, kukamba sama punziro, mkutuwa kare inu yosini mapwenge tai. Funsa funsani, kuni fe, Stay 
0991-276-273 Anya mata onsi Ofuna kupira ku university Jaka chamawa Agukamu gila kumene kuku Kumara nasa kabito boys academy Chifu wa kubaja Zika kanika kwenda aku Ugu kumara nasa zuma teka Welcome to St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela, where we prepare our students for the future with excellence, diversity and innovation. St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela offers a wide range of academic programs that cater for the interests and abilities of our students. Our teachers are qualified, experienced and dedicated to helping learners achieve their goals. We have three schools under St. Peter's Private Schools. We have a primary school, Boys Secondary School and the Girls Secondary School at your disposal. Science and technology are crucial in today's world. We have audio visual learning facilities, state-of-the-art lab lottery, and a modern and well-equipped library. At St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponera, we also celebrate our diversity and our culture. We also prepare our students for the next stage of their lives. So what are you waiting for? Join us at St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela today and discover your potential. St. Peter's Private Schools in Imponela. Welcome back. Beneficiaries of the Seed Capital Initiative, which government is providing to people to start small and medium businesses, have thanked government for introducing the Pro Poor facility. A spot check in data established that people who were relying on social cash transfer alone have now graduated and are faring well in the carpentry business. We have a report by Isaac Jali. <laughs> Rotazio Filimon of Chirukula Village in the area of traditional authority Kachere in Delta District is in two carpentry and for some years he has been a beneficiary of social cash transfers. He says his family's living condition has improved following increased monthly sales. He commends government for the initiative to graduate cash transfer beneficiaries to run standalone business enterprises. The I thank government for this seed capital, which has helped me settle in business. Before I received this capital, I used it to struggle to mobilize raw materials such as timber, among others. Now every month, I make a profit of over 200,000 waja, which enables me to take care of my family. While the program is giving these people who were selected into the program a uh, CD capital. So far, they have doubled and some they have really trebled whatever they have received. We, we have some whose capital has now moved from the 250,000 they received to around 750,000 and beyond that they have even acquired some assets like livestock and some are in the uh, verge of trying to start reconstructing their houses. Financial access for rural markets, smallholders and enterprises is a seven-year nationwide development program aimed at supporting household economic development of the Atra Pua. Isaac Jali, MBC, Deza. Farmers in Rumpi have applauded government for initiating financial services that have helped to transform lives of rural-based communities. One of the farmers in Mpopa area in the district, Enok Katuya, said through the Farmsy project, farmers are able to access reliable markets and earn more money from their farm produce. Musa Secheo reports. To provide access to markets and other financial services among rural-based communities, Malawi government, through the Minister of Finance, initiated the Financial Access for Rural Markets, Smallholders and Enterprises Farmsy project, in different parts of the country. Mpompa in Irumpi district is one of the areas where farmers have benefited from the project as explained by Eno Kikatuya. We had problems in finding certified seeds and the proper use of money. 
but now we are able to keep. Other farmers also say they have so far made several achievements, such as constructing good houses. Reaching today, I have managed to build a house and I am still improving it. After selling some crops, I bought motorcycle and equipment for irrigation farming. Due to high demand for the project in rural areas, farm sale coordinator in the northern region, Jesse Njiko, says many people will be considered as arrangements with partners on sustainability of the project are in place. We have people that have paid school fees for their children at the university and secondary schools. So there's a lot of fruits here in Rumpi. And uh, we, we, we are just uh, working uh, as we are finishing this project next year. We are still working with the stakeholders right now so that there can be sustainability of this project. That when we leave next year in March, uh, the fruits of this project should continue. And we believe that our, our, our um, partnerships with Milele and other off-takers that are working here in Rumpi will continue. The project is being funded by International Fund for Agriculture Development, IFAD. Musa Secheo, MBC News. Opposition Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, says it will not change its decision of allocating positions according to regions, despite criticisms and backlash from some of the aspiring candidates. Some aspiring candidates have expressed concern over resolutions by the party to allow some positions to be competed solely by candidates who are permanent residents of respective regions, a development political analysts say is undemocratic. We have a report. In a few days' time, Opposition Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, will hold its national elective convention in Blanta after the party announced on Tuesday this week that it will effect resolutions passed in 2018 on voting criteria. Among others, the Central Executive Committee adopted an equal distribution of positions among regions in the National Governing Council that saved office from 2018 to date, a development that has not pleased some of the aspirants. The party says some of the positions will be competed solely by candidates who are permanent residents of the respective regions. However, this has not gone down well with some aspirants who described it as ill-timed. For instance, Kenneth Bonali, who aspires for the position of National Director for Logistics, said the communication is undemocratic and believes the party is trying to protect the interest of some individuals. However, DPP Secretary General Clement Mwale told MBC that the party's decision is final. He says aspirants who are against the decision are those not conversant with the party's ideology. For those who are having concerns that it's not good, I think it's just um, for anyone's opinion, uh, expressing opinion, it's a, it's a free. Uh, you, 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 we respect their decision, but they, they should also respect the decision of the party. That the party uh, uh, has decided that and it's not the first time. In 2018, it was the same. In 2080, it was the same. So I don't know why they should be um, having problems now, unless they are new in the party. Commenting on the matter, political commentator Shimometsitsi, who is also a lecturer at the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, MUBAS in Blanta, says the resolutions are infringing and not under the tenets of democracy. I am saying this because the, uh, the positions that have been highlighted are positions of the National Governing Council, which is the, an executive committee of the party at national level and not necessarily at the regional level. And therefore, uh, the expectation would be that uh, <clears throat> the contestants can come from uh, any other region uh, to contest for such uh, positions. If anything, the party may just put in place a certain mechanism uh, which would practically uh, happen perhaps in the aftermath of the convention. The Democratic Progressive Party, DPP, is expected to hold its elective convention at Comesa Hall in Blanta this weekend. Charles Bensulo, MBC News, Blanta. Well, that item wraps up this edition of NBC News. A reminder of our top stories before we leave.
Malawi and Mozambique signed several agreements that will enhance cooperation and boost economic activities between the two countries. The National Construction Industry Council stops a Chinese company, King Steel Malada, from continuing to construct a warehouse along the bypass road in Lilongwe. Farms a project commended for providing finances to rural farmers and enabling access to reliable markets. For more on these and other stories, follow our online platforms, Facebook, X, and our website, mbc.mw. You can access all MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. You are with me, Marcus Basanje, and my sign language interpreter, Savita Wilima. Thanks for watching, and have a great night.